Good morning and welcome. My name's Sam and this is The Little Greenhouse Creates and thank you for joining me this morning. Hopefully this is our third time of trying to get on and having audio. You could all hear me, otherwise this video Right, so the card we're going to create this morning is this one here on the left hand side. It is the card using the Enjoy the Moment stamp set and it can be found on page 26 of the annual catalogue and I have cased it. Thank you ladies for coming back. Hopefully you can hear me now. Um, fingers crossed. I'm just waiting for you to just come back and say yes that's going to work. Yes you can hear me. Yay! Oh I'm so excited. I'm not quite sure what's happening with Facebook. Um, I've just had to reboot everything so fingers crossed that now works. Right, okay, so let's start. So this is the car we're going to create. It can be found on page 26 of the annual catalog. Um, and the only difference from the catalog version, which will bring this one in from here, is that I don't like fussy cutting. So, all good now, excellent. Um, I don't like fussy cutting, so I have Met, used a framelit to emboss my flower on. So that's the only difference. So let me bring in the sizes that we've got. Okay, so this is a piece of cardstock. It's in so saffron and it measures eight inches by five and three quarters, and I have scored it at four and burnished. I have then also got a piece of designer series paper. I've got the measurements here, basically because this is a different size to what I would normally use. Um, so the designer series paper is, <coughs> excuse me, five and three quarters by three and a half. And then I have a layering white piece, okay, which will sit on the card like this. And that's three inches by five and three quarters. And as usual, most of the work is carried out on this. And I have then a piece of card, which I've used <clears throat> Sorry, I've cut out using the stitched rectangular framelits for doing the flower on. Okay, so let's work on this bit first. So move them away. So, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tear this top layer off. I'm going to fold it over like so. And then I'm just going to... Take off a strip like this. <coughs> oh dear, I do apologise. I'm then going to cut it raggedly with my fingers going down there like this <coughs> and just creating a wavy line. Okay, we'll use those in a second. Now on the reverse of this, I'm going to use my um, seal, stamp and seal, and I'm just going to put a tiny bit there and a tiny bit there. Now, so that it doesn't stick fully, I'm just going to dab it with my finger to take majority of the stickiness away. Um, and then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to rest it on my grid paper. And that should hold it in place. Then I'm going to take my first piece of broken edge and I'm going to place it on my cardstock. And I'm going to hold it down with a bit of washi tape. Now you could just use normal sellotape if you preferred. This is what I have at hand. So that's going to hold that piece there. Then I'm going to bring this piece. I'm going to do exactly the same. And I'm going to put that in position like so. And again, I'm going to hold it with my washi tape. I'm just going to put a tiny bit across there. Now this now gives us the perfect platform for creating our banner, which is two seconds, is this section here that we're going to create. Okay, so I've got two colours and I'm using, I've got So Saffron and Pear Pizzazz. Now normally when you um, blend onto the paper with inks, you would work in a motion like so. But for this one, it's actually working in um, spots. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to start with the So Saffron. Open my pad. Put the mink on. Perfect. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it down firmly and I'm just going to add a bit there. And uh, maybe add some there. And then probably, well, it would make sense to add the rest here, wouldn't it, really? Okay, so we've got the three dots. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the green in, which in this case I'm using a pair of as. Wrap that around like so. And then I'm just going to add that into other areas that have got the white thing or showing, should I say, rather than this thing. So I'm just blending the colours in. Okay, so now that I'm happy with that, it's all blended in. If you need to add a bit more, then feel free to do so. And just bring it into the colours that you're happy with. So that's that. Now, that's the two colours I have blended with. But I'm actually bringing in a darker colour, the Evening Evergreen, to actually stamp on the paper. Okay, so in this case, I am using the three of the stamps. So I'm going to show you. This is the um, stamp set. So today I'm using this long piece here, but I'm also going to use these two and this little one here. So obviously you could use whichever you preferred. Um, and I'm going to start with the slightly larger of the three. Stamp it off to make sure, yep, that's fine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp. Now I'm stamping off of the card as well as on. And again, I'm just using um, three of the layers. This one. Okay. So that's that one completed. We can put that one aside. Then we're going to bring in the slightly smaller one. I'm going to use that one about there, maybe there and there. And then if you want to, you can fill in the little section with what looks to me like cocoa beans, but I am sure they're meant to be seeds. One, two, three, four, five, so that is how we create the middle section of this particular card. Now all you just need to do is carefully remove your um, piece of cut out paper so that can now be binned. And we are left with this little section here. So it still stuck slightly, so I'm just going to, that's it, leave it or it up. So there is our section. And so now what we need to do is to add our, so we've created this section and now what we're going to do is create this one. So I'm bringing in my piece of card that I've cut out and I'm going to bring in my long stemmed um, seed pods. I'm also going to bring in oops, my Versamark. Now you will remember I cut off the first section from one of the sheets. So this is the remaining section. So I can actually work on this and put any of the particles that I want. So taking my large brush, I'm just going to wipe down here like so. Then using the Versamark, I'm going to stamp onto the seed pods. Perfect. Turn it over and that can go oops. Obviously you can't see it, but I assure you it is there. And then using this time I've got the gold frosting powder. And I'm just going to sprinkle that over the top of my stamped image. And I'm just going to think about now as you can see there's a mist a bit here, so I'm just going to go in, go over, 
and as you can see it has taken up the spot. So with a smaller brush I'm just going to remove any of the pieces that don't need to be there like that bit there. Now before I start heating that up I'm just going to return the remainder of the powder to the pot and that like so and it will go down like that. I do apologise for my dog because obviously builders walking past the house again. Put that over there. It's going to be one of those very eventful Monday mornings I've got that feeling. Okay so that's that. We can put that aside for a second and then we can now bring in our heat. Let's try that again. We can bring in our heat tool. So you might just want to step away or turn off your mic stand slightly while I heat this up. It takes a couple of seconds to heat up and then I shall work from the bottom of the image up the image until the colour has changed. Okay, so it's quite warm now and I'm just going to place it. Wait, come back here. I'm just going to hold it down and you should hopefully see the change. If I bring it up here hopefully see the change of the colour as it melts. Getting lighter as you can see. Um, There we go, and hopefully you can see that it has changed, it's become quite shiny instead of the flat. Very effective when you're using the um, embossing powder. Okay, so that is our embossing image done, and now we can create our card. So what I want to do is I'm going to decide on which way round this piece of card is going to sit on my hard base. I think I quite like it like so. Um, I've got the sentiment, uh, just to, oh, sorry, a little note, and I think I'm going to pop it just there, but I'm just going to make sure where that's going to sit. It might actually be better in the bottom All right. So let's do that first. So again, I'm going to use the Evening Evergreen. Just test it on there first. Yep, happy with that. And then I'm going to add that there. Perfect. Just give that a little waft for a second for it to dry. In fact, what I will do is I will attach this to the base card while we wait. Uh, again, I'm going to use the stamp and seal, and I'm just going to. around the edges like so. Aha, now that one's run out so bear with me and I will show you how to replace that. So what I've got here is a replacement which I can open up, comes in a sealed packet like this and I'll just open up and pull out a cartridge. We then pull this aside, or apart even, like so. That just comes off. That bit can be thrown away. So we've got this bit, and then this now replaces this we've just thrown away, and we just put them into the holes that are provided at the back. Place that on the top, like so, and there you are. We are all ready to go, and we're back up and running. So you might need to just, and we're in place. As you can see, it's actually quite easy to replace a stamp and seal. Okay, so I'm just going to work out the positioning. I'm going to lay that flat. Then I'm going to bring in my piece of 
um, blended card. And that again will be stuck down again with the stamp and seal. There. And you just go over the piece that you had already stuck down, because obviously most of the sticky will now have left. And that sits up there, like so, allowing you to have this layer top and bottom. So the only other thing to add now is our um, picture, and I will use my dimensionals for that, which are here, and I'm just going to put one, two, and on this occasion, because it's been heated, it's slightly bending, I will put one in the middle. Take off the backings. Okay. And then we can adhere this to our backings. Is that where we want it to go? There's a slight edge here. And then we can back it there. Now, if you wanted to, you can add a piece of ribbon or thread. Um, I have which is what shows you in the picture that it has. This thread is actually quite thin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double it up. So, and then I shall make my bow. Never make a bow on camera. Okay, don't act with children or animals and never make a bow on camera. That's the first section. Wrap that round. Put it through. Okay. Now we've got the bow. Pull that down slightly. And yeah. I think that will sit on there. Um, I'm just going to attach that with a glue dot. I have here. So using my pick tool, I should just. I think that's small enough that it can fit in place there. Okay, and then my bow can sit on there and just push it down. Now these ends do fray, so don't worry. And I'm just going to trim this edge because obviously this edge is there. We go. So we are completed. So let's move these pieces aside. And so this is the card that we've created from the catalogue on page 26. This is the original one I've just shown you. Okay, so as you can see, different size framelits, it's up to you, or you if you prefer fussy cutting. Now I have one more that to show you, which I created earlier on. And this is slightly different because what I've done is instead of using the DSP, the design series paper, I have actually used a piece of card space and I then have used the tiny little seeds to decorate the edges of the um, paper. So on this particular occasion, I have used Bumblebee here and then I have stamped over it with the Bumblebee ink. And instead of wrapping the bow here, I've actually wrapped it around the actual card. So there you go. We have three cards created from the image that was shown on page 26 of the Amy catalogue. So thank you ever so much for staying with me, even though we did have a few hiccups in the beginning. Um, it was lovely to have you here. I am back tomorrow for a Technique Tuesday, even if we've not had enough techniques here today. Um, I am back at 10 a.m. So please do join me if you're free. It would be lovely to have you here. Um, whatever you do today, stay safe and enjoy crafting. Lots of love. Bye.